And we're back, and I wanted us to do a electrostatics problem uh, using Gauss's law that builds on a, a pretty classic problem in mechanics. Um, if you ever do mechanics and study gravity, sometimes you run into the problem where imagine you have the earth and you drill a hole, you get a tunnel, all the way through the earth, through the center of the earth, to the other side, and you jump in. What would happen? Uh, obviously, you'd, you'd expect to fall into that tunnel, um, but uh, you know it, gravity behaves a little differently. So, uh, once you're inside a, an object, so that it's kind of an interesting problem. But we can do that with electricity, and whether you're doing gravity or electricity, it's a, a Gauss's law problem. So, here goes. Um, we'll just change the problem around a little bit. Let's say you have a a positively charged ball an insulating ball and it has a uniform charge density rho kind of a, a standard sort of problem in Gauss's law but in this case you, you drill a tunnel through it just drill a thin tunnel so it's not really going to mess up uh, the behavior of the fields or anything and you drop an electron into this positively charged sphere what would happen? so we want to try, uh, try to identify the nature of the motion, just what would physically would the electron do, and then also try to figure out its speed. Okay, well, let's just choose probably the most interesting point, which would be when it gets to the center of the ball, if it falls into the tunnel. And here's just a real beautiful sketch of the situation. There's a little electron up here, right at the surface of the sphere. The sphere has a total charge, big Q. Uh, but then that, that uniform density. Uh, Gauss's law, something that if you're watching this video you probably have hopefully done many times, <laughs> um, is set up the usual way. If you're outside of the ball, that is if, if we imagine a Gaussian surface out here, uh, you see the total charge of the sphere over our constant, and that gives us the usual field if you're outside the thing. Solve for the field, it's charge over 4 pi epsilon, and then it goes as 1 over r squared. So it's kind of your classic kq over r squared. It's just a point charge. It looks like a point charge when you're outside. But the interesting part is what happens when you're inside. With a, a non-conductor, an insulated material, where you have a, a density, uh, and we go in, inside that material. So now let's imagine we have a Gaussian surface in here, where that's a little r. Uh, now the charge is density times the volume, 4 thirds pi little r cubed, of our Gaussian surface. And so again, we kind of get a classic result when you have uniform densities. This factor of 4 pi goes away. And our field, uh, a factor of, of little r squared, also goes away. We're left with a dense, or a, a field that's linear with radius. That's all going to be over 3 epsilon. Okay? So, this helps us answer the first question. What's the nature of the electron's motion when you drop it in? Well, first of all, if it's a positively charged ball and a negatively charged electron, uh, the force that it's going to feel is, is going to be negative. That is, attractive. So it's going to be the charge of the electron times density times radius all over 3 epsilon. Now all this stuff here, these are all constants. So we have a force that is, is attractive, it's a restoring force, and it's linear with position. Where have we seen this before? In mechanics, we have Hooke's law, we have the spring force. So, and this is what leads to some harmonic motion. 
mathematically, this electrical force is identical to this. So the electron would, would oscillate back and forth in this tunnel and just oscillate um, from side to side throughout this material, throughout the sphere. It would act like, like a ball on a spring. That's pretty cool. The same thing happens with gravity if, if the Earth were to have a uniform mass density. You jump in and you'd oscillate back and forth like you're on a spring. Okay, harmonic motion. That's pretty cool. But now we have this non-constant force and we want to figure out speeds. What's our rule of thumb, dating back to mechanics, if you want to find speed? We want to use energy. In electricity, what that means is uh, the electron, when you hold it at the surface, right, right at the mouth of the tunnel, it's going to have potential energy. And to find potential energy, we need the electric potential. We need the voltage. And in particular, if we go from the mouth of the tunnel to the center of the tunnel, if we fall in, we're going to have a change in voltage. We're moving through an electric field, and so we're going to have a change in voltage. The change in voltage in electrostatics, we need to integrate the electric field that we're moving through. Okay, And we just found that. We know the field inside this thing. So we want to find out what, what's, what's our um, change in potential if we go from the surface down to the center as it falls in. We can do that if we put in this field that's linear. Uh, with position, with the radius. Okay, and let's see. What we get is uh, we have some constants. We have that minus sign, and the antiderivative is one half little r squared. So when we evaluate this thing, our our voltage. Uh, the change in voltage um, let's see we're, we're going to have rho over 6 epsilon 0 minus big R squared okay so that's the voltage difference from the surface as you fall in and get to the center. What we can do then is when we know that voltage difference, that means that we have a change in potential energy. Okay, Where does that potential energy go? Well, that potential energy turns into kinetic energy. Okay. It's no different than if you're just dropping something from a height and you want to find out the speed as it hits the ground. Okay, the, the, your lost potential energy, or your change in potential energy, turns into uh, the gained kinetic energy. Okay, so if we solve for the speed, uh, that's going to be 2 times the change in potential energy all over the mass. Well, our change in potential energy, uh, we just need our voltage difference and multiply it by the charge of the electron. So that's going to be 2 times the charge of the electron, our density, big R squared, all over 6 epsilon, and the mass. And now we've got our speed. The speed at the center is going to be just the square root of that. Uh, let's see, 2 over 6, 6 thirds, so the charge electron, the density, the radius of the sphere squared, all over 3 epsilon and the mass. So we can do things like that. And we could actually do this, we could change our limits, we could find our speed anywhere in the tunnel, just by changing from the surface to the center, we could go from the surface to any radius that we want inside there, 
use conservation of energy and figure out our speed. Okay, I just wanted to outline how to do this. Okay, so it's pretty cool. It's a it's a different kind of Gauss's problem. It involves non-conductors and densities. It involves uh, electrostatic forces. Okay, um, charge times the field, and it involves energy, where we need to find out changes in potential energy to figure out speeds. Okay, energy is going to be conserved for this. So. Pretty cool stuff. Um, it's harmonic motion, it's oscillations, it's a little bit of everything. <laughs> um, so I hope this helps. I hope you found it interesting. And if you ever run into something like this, uh, it is doable using the stuff that we know from electrostatics. Uh, until next time, we'll see you later.